in the coming days. Tindi Weyego, KTN News. Well, indeed, pertinent issues there were raised in that report on the cost of misfla. Mm -hmm. And I'm now joined by Ken Gishinga, who is the chief economist at Mentoria Consulting. Many thanks, for Ken, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, just speaking off from that late, latest report on uh, the cost of misfla, how will this uh, play out for many households across the country? I mean, obviously, it's going to be a difficult challenge. Um, January is always one of the most challenging months for most people because the rents are going up, um, fuel going up. So whenever you have food, which is an important component of the expenditure basket going up, mm -hmm. it means it's going to be, and of course we've never talked about the education material mm -hmm. going up. So I think it's going to be a strain mm -hmm. for some people uh, moving forward. All right. Yeah. And what's the way forward around this? Because we have counties that are endowed with uh, right. enormous uh, resources in terms of uh, fertility and uh, the game plan in terms of food security. I've always talked of the idea of comparative advantage where every county should look at the area it's most comparable. It has a sort of easier way of making money. And if you talk about the food basket regions, like Transoya, Wasin Gishu, um, they have a big opportunity to be able to grow enough crop mm -hmm. for the rest of the country, especially if you talk about Mombasa, where a lot of things in the hotels are coming from up country. So I think part of the county strategic plans and we've pushed this a long time. Each mm. county needs to have a strategic plan and food security needs to be one of the big things. If you look at a county like Kiambu, mm -hmm. for example, where real estate has encroached so much into the food growing zones, sure. um, one has to wonder over the next five years, where will the county be able to, will it be able to feed itself or will all the food be coming from um, other parts of the county? So I think this is part of every strategic plan that every governor mm -hmm. has to work with. All right. And uh, let's shift gears a bit away from food. And uh, one of the other key issues we've seen this week is that uh, the NSC uh, has rallied and uh, the NSC 20 share index gained about uh, 25 points, right. um, hitting 3,700. Um, really, for investors, are things looking up or it's too early? I think things are beginning to look up and it's exactly what we expected. I think we said after the inauguration last November, we are going to see investor confidence um, coming up and ex that's exactly what's happening. We are seeing better sentiments. Uh, we are seeing more investment coming in. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean that we, we've completely closed on all the political issues? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. We've seen the opposition has issued a timetable for some of the rallies um, scheduled for January. So we can't say that cycle is completely closed. But yes, most investors are happy that uh, there is a government in place and there is some sort of predictability. And that always drives stock prices up. All right. And uh, as we wrap up, uh, Ken, uh, really, right now, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty with this uh, announcement by the opposition. Do you think um, it might affect the growth trajectory that uh, Treasury is anticipating of about 6%? I mean, obviously, any time you have unrest, and we saw it last year, any time you have unrest, that always seeps into the business confidence. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's going to be as bad as last year. I think last year was rock bottom mm -hmm. for this country. Uh, but I think uh, the discussions around dialogue mm -hmm. and unity, I think they still need to continue because what happens is when people start sort of like uh, postponing decisions, mm -hmm. people say, okay, January 30th, mm -hmm. let me hold off till February 1st, once all these things. When that kind of um, investor postponing mm -hmm. starts sipping into the economy, it means mm -hmm. you slow down the targets. And to be honest, this is a country that can do 10% double-digit growth. But if the political noise of last year is not silenced, then even 6% might still be a struggle. All right. Yeah. So it's too early to say things have uh, leveled out? Um, I think it's too early. I'm glad that when I looked at the PMI indexes that mm -hmm. it, it shows that the economy has finally begun mm -hmm. expanding mm -hmm. because all the prior indices had shown contraction. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk to ordinary business, many of them are seeing an uptick mm. in the transport sector. Uh, we are seeing new hotels coming in. Mm. I think the Moven Peak will be opening soon. Mm -hmm. So I think net-net, there is a positive boost. Uh, but the question is, what about the other issues around the economy, around fiscal policy, around national debt, the issues around uh, the interest rate cap? If those two things are not resolved 
in the first quarter or second quarter, then access to business, access to credit is going to be a challenge. And as long as access to credit is a challenge, then it means business might not take off at the rate that we want to see them taking off. But yes, yes, it's going to be a much better year than right. last year. All right. Yeah. Many thanks, Ken Gishinga. Always a pleasure. Appreciate your coming and uh, addressing this pertinent issues around uh, the economy.